uh, bad NHS test and trace. Uh, look, I, I, you know, I share people's frustrations, and I understand uh, totally why uh, we do need to see faster turnaround times, and uh, uh, we do need to uh, do need to improve it. We need to we need to make sure that people who uh, do get a positive uh, test uh, self isolate. That's that's the, the absolutely crucial. The test trace and isolation becomes much more difficult to have an impact once numbers are high. So it's much more effective when numbers are low. That's the first point. Uh, the second uh, point is that I think the testing system has ramped up the numbers they're able to do quite effectively, but it's really important to concentrate on numbers of contacts, isolation as quickly as you can, and getting things back as quickly as you can, ideally to get the whole process done within 48 hours. And it's very clear there's room for improvement on all of that, and therefore that will be diminishing the effectiveness of this. Now, as the health restrictions have changed and that's had an impact uh, on the economy, I think it's right that we respond pragmatically and flexibly to that, because ultimately what we're trying to do is protect people's jobs and income, and the measures that we've put in place today, I'm confident will do just that, uh, and this will be now in place uh, for a while to come. And it's clearly not sustainable to carry on acting in this way forever. So as we continue intervening in the economy, it's right that that is targeted and effective uh, and done in a way that we won't always be able to do absolutely everything that everyone would like us to do, and it's because of that. Numbers speak for themselves. They're increasing, and um, they're not going to decrease quickly. And I think it's likely that some measures of restriction are going to need to be in place for a while to try and get those numbers down. Obviously, the quicker you get the R below 1, the quicker numbers come down and things then give a bit of room. And so a lot depends on what happens now over the next few weeks. Vaccines have never been made in anything like this time frame. It's been at least five years. And so to be where we are now is remarkable. Uh, thanks very much. Well, I mean, I, I really hope that we do make uh, progress with uh, vaccines. And I, you know, I, I wonderful that Patrick is uh, is uh, is so optimistic, if I can put it that, that way, uh, about them. Um, you know, I, I. But we can't, Jane. In my view, rely on that. We've got to keep going. Uh, it, it may happen. Uh, we're working flat out to ensure that it does. Uh, but we we can't just count on that. Uh, and I'm afraid strongly reject what you say about uh, me being at war with. Uh, local leaders. That's that's not not the case. We've ha had great conversations with uh, with uh, local leaders, mayors, and, and others. I'm grateful also to Andy Burnham uh, in uh, Greater Manchester, where uh, where uh, he's ag agreed to help uh, bring the R down with a package of measures in in Tier Three. And as as Patrick has has just said, thanks to the efforts of uh, people across the country, we are starting uh, to see uh, some progress.